Hello everyone and welcome back to the Liverpool Women's Podcast and this is a big one because it's episode 50 which is I just mad. had a sudden urge then to get up and run around the table and I don't know why I just really want to do it that's how excited but you I'm are I'm not going to do it I'm going to mess up all the cameras oh, and from the millennia you. decade millennia century, century. <laughs> I had it as well. I had it in my head. I was about to say, it's nearly a century. A, it's nearly a year as well since we done we did the very first one. How are we still doing? I'd this? love to do. I want to do like a clip from that first one. <gasps> we should react then, to our first video. It's I can't soon. watch it. No, I can't watch. Oh it. Oh my god! Time. I remember just sat there like Neil Redfern has twelve kids. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally like that. I was, no, I can't watch it because I just make. No, me we're gonna do. We're gonna do a no. a, a women's react. Oh, God, react, no. yeah. Okay, well, that's that's gonna be our hundredth episode special. Hundredth, fiftieth, no, <laughs> a year special. Sorry, I'm not on the ball today. Well, is, do you want to give us a kickoff okay. question? My kickoff question is: If you could be sponsored, as of, if you were like a professional footballer, yeah, um, if you could be sponsored by. Adidas, Nike, New Balance, all of them. Yeah. Puma. Yeah. What's the other one? Umbro. Under Kappa, Armour. whatever. Yeah. Which <laughs> one would you, I don't know? <laughs> which one would you want to be son- uh, sponsored by? Nike. Why? It's like the clothes. <laughs> no, as in like if you're a football, you'd like the boots and stuff like that. As yeah, well. I always wore like boots when I played. Yeah. Yeah. I think I did as well. I qu- I'm starting to quite like Under Armour stuff. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You're not a fan. They do really nice like sports bras and things like that. I've got like one item of clothing that's Under Armour. What is it? It's like a gym, like top. Like. Yeah, they're good for like gym stuff. Mm. Maybe like running stuff. Like I, I don't think I'd choose to wear an Under Armour like tracksuit, but I'd no. wear like Under Armour like running leggings things. Like I feel that. like with, with Nike and Adidas, they do good sportswear as well as like just like normal clothing as well. Like, like casual, like, wear. like ca- <laughs> casual. Cash. <laughs> yeah, like they do like nice like leggings and like. T-shirts and okay. stuff like that. So. You, you, did you not see my night call yesterday? Oh my gosh, she sent me a photo. She went to Cheshire Oaks with Les B. Honestly, Les Gee, Les B. <laughs> Les B gets mentioned more in this podcast She's than anyone else. Though. Absolute legend. Um, but no, she, she sent me a picture and there was like five Nike shirts, three Levi shirts, two pairs of shorts. I was like, you are the brand queen. Um, back to the question. I would, you see... I've always been a Nike person, always, but recently I quite like Adidas. I love Adidas, those Adidas, is it N- NMDs, the trainers? Okay, but they Adidas make really, really nice trainers, mm, but then I, I, I don't know. I feel like Liverpool as like a city is more Adidas based yeah. than Nike. So you I've got Nike see, shoes on. I've got Adidas shoes on. Wow, mm. Clash of the Titans here. Clash of the sponsors, should I say. Um, But I think, yeah, I don't know. I like the Nike hoodies. Mm. The quality of Nike feels like really nice. And I've got loads of Nike joggers and like running stuff, so. So which one? <laughs> I don't, I couldn't, Nike Adas. Cap it, okay. <laughs> Umbro. <laughs> Blondesdale. Oh God. USA Pro. <laughs> Anyway, um, so all the WSL fixtures were released this morning. Um, I completely forgot. I About t- an hour ago. Yeah, I, I had a text from Amy saying that we played Man United on the 20th of September, and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but wait, first, I was like, how do you know? And then it clicked. <laughs> I've got inside links. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I planned it. We won't go through them all. We'll just go through the opening weekend. Um, so We probably should have written down when the derbies are. Yeah. One of them's quite early on, and one, one of them's, them's quite in, late. I think it's one in December. I don't know. I can find that out for you while you run through the yeah, first few ones. So th- the opening fixture is, firstly, we have Man City versus Man United on Saturday the 7th, which will be a very exciting game. We then, on the Sunday, have Chelsea versus Tottenham, Birmingham versus Everton, Liverpool versus Reading, Arsenal versus West Ham, and Bristol versus Brighton. Um, out of all them fixtures, keep stalling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what to say. Out of all them fixtures, what's your favourite one? Um. Okay, I'm back in the room. Okay. Uh, what's my favourite fixture? Yeah. Are we talking? Like... Which one do you think is going to be the most exciting? Like. Oh, City versus United. Yeah. You can't not say anything yeah. about that. Um. Mm. 
I don't know. I'm really conf- I don't. I d- genuinely. I was thinking about this the other day. I know it's quite early to predict. Like not all people have like finished off their signings or whatever. Mm. But I'm like, Arsenal could definitely win this again. Do you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like, they've actually make made some really good signings. Yeah. I think Arsenal definitely going to be up there. Maybe. I don't know about Man City this <clears> season. I've got a weird feeling about them. But Ellen White coming off the back of a World Cup, like he's gonna be fire for them. Yeah, Ellen White's gonna have a boss season. Obviously, they just signed Manny in as well. He's an amazing, like amazing yeah. centre back. I think they still haven't. I still, they still need to fill that Nikita Paris hole though. I feel Tony like Duggan. I don't think she'll go back there. You know, I feel like it, I, th- I feel like it'll there's be so like, much. That's defense. a qu- we won't talk about that because okay. that's a question that we've got. Okay. Um, who do you think's got? Who's the, which is the who's got? What team's got the hardest? Right. No, 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 like open and day. Oh. Like who's um, going to struggle or like... I think Spurs have got a difficult one yeah. because obviously they're playing Chelsea mm-hmm. at Stamford Bridge and mm-hmm. that's Big. colossal. Yeah. I love that word. <laughs> um, I think other than that, I think it's quite like even. even like yeah. I would say Bristol and Brighton are on the same... Well, West Ham, Arsenal, West Ham is going to have a bit of a tough game there. Yeah, but I think they've also made quite a good few mm. good signings and they've kept their main players like Lerman and, yeah. and people like that yeah, so I think Birmingham are gonna have a challenge against Everton with the um, with the quality of players that They've Everton have signed. signed I wanted to mention Everton like at some point in this pod because mm-hmm. who, like whoever runs their scouting they've done well yeah they've done very well very well yeah. and I am very jealous and I know our friend Sarah we absolutely wasn't yeah. with every single one of those um yeah I'd I think, I think they've there's obviously they've done thing they've done this for a reason they've done the Manchester derby for a reason in in that way to bring more attention to the it's opening a fix. <laughs> oh, it's fixed. Um, I'd love to know how they do it though. Um, but I don't know. I think obviously I'm really looking forward to Liverpool Reading mm. because I think. Obviously, it's the team we follow. It's going to be exciting either way. Yeah. Whoever Liverpool faced in the opening day, I think it's been kind to us that it is Reading. No disrespect to them, obviously. No. Like they did well last season, but I think after starting against Arsenal away last season, we've I def- think we've yeah, definitely, um, we've definitely gone up a step. Yeah, definitely. And also, can I just go back? I don't know whether it was last week's podcast or the week before, and I was like, because we're at home, first game of the season, we'll be away is last it? game of the season. And we are away last game of the season. Is it? To, Chelsea? Um, oh, I've gone all the way down to the I think it's Chelsea. It is Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. On the... It's May something. 16th of May. Yeah. Yeah, Chelsea. So, buzzing. Thank you. I don't like that, though. Last game no. of the season, away against Chelsea, you potentially could be, like, challenging for the title. Okay. But we could, we could be the upset, do you know what I mean? Oh. Absolutely buzzing. Oh, I can't wait for the season to start. Like World Cup's done. I've had like a week to just chill, and then they're like, <laughs> "Yes, get me into the season now." I I need a week to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I still need a week. He's still recovering. I feel like I've got a World Cup hangover. Yeah, like I just want like I want a day where I don't have to think about football. <laughs> but like yeah, it's no, not. Phys- it's that just, was it's yesterday. Not- no, because I still thought about it. Well, that's your own fault. I know. Can't blame anyone else but yourself. I know. Anyway, um, but like talking about the stadiums and stuff like that, what what do you think? What do you make of it all? Because obviously, like you said, Chelsea had Stamford Bridge Open Day, City had the Etihad, um, Spurs, Spurs are going to play, gonna at play there point. at some point. Arsenal will probably play at the Emirates at some point as well. You'd, you'd, you'd hope so, especially as they were like champions last yeah. season. So like. <laughs> Go bad, bit of both. I think initially when I first heard it, I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. I kind of thought about it and I was like, is it going to be all that great? Like, if is it going to be a basically empty stadium mm. with a team playing in it? And I think that's potentially the negative side for I it. I think Stamford Bridge will get quite full. Yeah, maybe. Not like I a just, sold out, like, but yeah, it'll, it'll I, just, a I, of I was worried that maybe the atmospheres wouldn't be as, mm. as good as people are anticipating. But then I kind of sat there and I was like, no, this is massive. You wouldn't really get that last season. I know Brighton did it at the Amex towards the end of the season and they yeah, got a yeah. lot of they people lot of going people. to that game. 
And I also was like, this is an opportunity for people that maybe don't manage to get tickets week in, week out to go and see Chelsea men or even just go to Stamford Bridge. It gives yeah. them an opportunity, well, and the other sides, gives them an opportunity to actually go in the stadium. And after the summer we've just had in, in women's world football, I think mm. opening up the accessibility for a lot more people to go and see. Because I know at Boreham, is it Boreham Wood where they play? Um, they get a lot of Chelsea have a great following yeah, in, in the women's game, that, and it's always they? full there. So maybe mm. it's good that they've chosen to play it in a bigger stadium, so they can like, exceed. The, they'll have exceeded the capacity. For example, yeah. and you don't want to put a limit on how many people come to the first game. Yeah. So I think it's a good idea. And isn't it free entry as well? Yeah, to all of them. Yeah, and then, but also it's um, international week for the men's. Yeah, so everyone's so, like, got a free week. So that's why ev- that's why they're doing it, obviously. But everyone's got a free week, so like genuinely, there's there's like there's no excuse unless you just genuinely don't like women's football. But like, it's no excuse to not go and give it a go. Do you know what I mean? Especially if you're local, as especially well. especially if you're local and it's free and like you know you actually want to learn about the game, then go for it. Go and yeah. do it. I I think that City United game at the Etihad is going to be massive. Yeah. I think it's going to get a lot of people. We can, we can actually go because it's on the Saturday. Oh, my God, let's go. I'm going. Let's go. I'm going. Get, get your car out. <laughs> I'm not driving there. Fill up the petrol. <laughs> no. No, I, I'd love to go. Yeah, it would be an exciting game to watch. Like, I'd like just to see how like the fans interact with each other as I well. just want to see them both play. I want to see the new signings of Man United. I want to see the new signings of Man City. Mm. And I just want to see the play. I think it'll be such a good atmosphere and an opportunity that to, to most like it's a it's an even number league now yeah we're not going to get a break any any of the the the, the yeah match weeks. it happened to everton quite a lot last season yeah. i think they were the team that had like the most breaks so we're not going to have many opportunities to go to these other games so no. i think we need to take each one i think that was one of the things that we spoke about that we need to do this season go to more go games to more that games. aren't specifically actually make it to every single liverpool home game because we were yeah. a bit we all got caught up in things last time mm. and then um, then do this go to other yeah. games that aren't necessarily definitely. at liverpool and bring coverage to that as well definitely so then new sign and alert announced mm-hmm. yesterday um i want a klaxon <laughs> on my arm here i'm gonna yeah cool <laughs> You make it the most awkward thing sometimes. I know. But it's going to... Production quality will be incredible. Someone commented on the week and was like, there's too many awkward pauses in this. And I was like, yeah, that's Amy. <laughs> but they're not awkward for me. No, they're not. That's the thing. Like, for I think all, maybe listeners, maybe. But not like, for us. Like, like if, you're listen, if you're not watching it on YouTube and you're just like listening... Like I can, I can understand why you'd think why is just a massive like we're the, probably the least awkward people. Yeah, like we're just especially not, when we're sat here like chatting. To we're just other. not bothered, are we? No, no. Anyway, um, cool. Jay Bailey has signed for Liverpool from Chelsea. Yes, um, come on, <laughs> Nicola. Wait. How are you feeling about that? I'm okay. I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> Nicola's a Chelsea fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a Chelsea fan. Um, she's only twenty three, so she's still quite young. But yeah. she's played for Arsenal. She played for Chelsea, and then she was on loan at Reading last season. So for twenty three, she's had like a decent. Did she go to the career. England twenty World Cup as well? Yeah, something like that. I read something, that. Yeah. So she's obviously got good international experience as well. Yeah. So like she signed for Chelsea in two thousand sixteen. So she would have only been twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty. Yeah. <laughs> 1920 something like that yeah um and then obviously she went on loan at Redden for like the remainder of last season so she probably would just for more playing time really yeah um but yeah as well as being young she's quite she's quite experienced oh yeah coming through like Arsenal youth system and yeah. things like that playing for several different teams I think you kind of see that in the men and women's game like especially coming up through the London team ranks <laughs> Um, they go elsewhere for their experience and then like they either sign for a big club or they come back and, and, and do something else so oh God, like, the butty vans here <laughs> Just gotta think. go sorry <laughs> gotta go um, but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I can't even think what I was saying now oh yeah a lot of youth people like come up the ranks in some way and then leave and that's what you kind of see in the women's game as yeah. well, which yeah. is starting to see, and that's obviously what the path that Jay Bailey's taken. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like Liverpool's transfer like window, 
we've signed players who we need and we've actually signed experienced players yeah like we've now got the mixture of a season's worth of experienced players in like christy murray bradley auckland who who kind of played in the in the championship the year the year Mm -hmm. before they signed for us and now you're getting players that have played week in week out for a few seasons now like um becky jane who's been in in red for for for, for, was it 11 years eight years i think it was yeah um then you've got Mel Lawley, who's played for England, who's played for City. Yeah, and it's like, like, that's the ex- best. That's amazing. Oh I'm just so still so buzzing about that. Did you that? see on Instagram, uh, Sweetman Kirk and Kitchen yeah, showed them that yeah. um, Mid- sweet the place. deliveries, yeah, like, yeah. Yes. Um, so, yeah, you've got the perfect mix. You've also got that the Gemma Perfield edge, like, signing from an oh. American side. So mm. I think all the cogs are starting to fit together. Yeah. And I think that's all, all down to Jepson and her... Re- I mean, we need a centre-back. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to say that. Yeah, I think need, I think I'll, I think I'll, a lot of people is agree. I think Leanne Rowe will go back to centre back. Yeah, I think so too. You mentioned that the other. I day, think it'll you? be, um, Becky Jean, Bradley Auckland, Leanne Rube, and then Gemma Perfield. I think that's how I think. Yeah, and then you've all, you've always got Farhi. You can you can do that role as well. And I think even Roberts could be. And Roberts, yeah. She's gone off the. I know. Off the, off the <laughs> radar she? so much. I don't know. She was injured towards last season. Is she get, she's getting married, isn't she? I think so. Yeah, I, seen on yes, I seen yesterday that she was like, oh, she picked a wedding dress. Oh. Didn't even know she was engaged. No, neither. Well in. Awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> um, but, yeah. but as far as, like, Jade Bailey's concerned, she midfielder, yeah? Yeah. So she's stuck the number eight as well. Oh, so she's going to, like, that Coombs replacement. Yeah. That's going to be good, though. A bit mm. of youth in there. He's not afraid to, so, to like, do it. I'd be like Rogers, Bailey, Christy Money is like that. Or is that our three in midfield? I think if it could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to go for a bit more experience and you, you're already, you maybe put Roberts, put Roberts in or Farhi yeah. in. But yeah, I think. Oh, it feels weird to be talking about Liverpool again, and, uh, and like formations and stuff. I'm so rusty on it because of like all the England stuff yeah. is taking over. Well, speaking of England, you you have got a World Cup question or something you want to mention about the oh, World yeah. Cup. Oh yeah. So I just wanted to have a discussion about how, like, on like personally, in your opinion, what yeah. you think, oh. who else is, oh. um, how you think the World Cup's now going to affect women's football, in particular in like the WSL and the the, the championship. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to affect it massively in terms of more people taking notice of it. Do you mean like in attending the games and stuff? Yeah, like that? yeah. So I think I feel like more people will will be in attendance next season. Maybe it'll it'll be really high for the first couple of weeks, and then it'll drop off a little bit, which is you know understandable, whatever. But I think also just in terms of like media as well, like you've seen the opening fixtures, City and United are on BT Sport, um, Chelsea's on the red button, BBC red button, and then Arsenal are on BBC um, are on BT Sport as well. So like there's three three opening games already on on the telly. Do you know what I mean? And maybe a couple of more might go on BBC Red Button or whatever. You you don't know, but I think just on the back, World Cup finished on Sunday. England got not England finished Saturday. It hasn't even been a week, and you've seen how many people have taken interest in it. Like I was reading a couple of comments on our videos this morning, and someone like said like I want you to do a video of like. Yeah. Intru- like introducing the Liverpool women's squad and the, like the WSL and how to watch games and and how to get to Putnam Park and blah 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 because they don't know anything about it but want to know more and it's like if you can just influence one or two people that's it's yeah. like it's massive do you know what I mean yeah I think that's that's such a good video idea to actually do I I I feel like we were a bit hes- hesitant at doing it at first because like we didn't want to just sit there and like dummies. We like, wanted to make sure like it was something that some people actually wanted to watch. Yeah, exactly. And there's no point putting loads of effort into something if there's no audience for yeah. it. But now obviously people are asking for it. That there obviously is going to be an audience. Yeah. But in terms of how I feel the, that it's going to change, I think I agree in like attendance wise. I think media is a massive part of women's football, and I think even more so than the men's. To be honest, like the attention's already there for the men's, yeah. and media's the one thing. Every, how many people? 
I've got a Twitter account and people have got an Instagram account, things Let, like yeah, that. Like, it's the it's the best platform to be able to promote it on. Yeah. And I think you're gonna start seeing like the numbers of retweets even from the WSL page, the the, the numbers of followers on yeah, the team, followers, everything yeah. like that. Like it's kind of the same. If you have one more follower, one more that's one more person that's taking interest. That's one more person that might potentially go to a game, things yeah. like that. I think the media is going to be a massive part of it, and it already has been for the World Cup in terms yeah. of like the Lionesses. Like their media team did a brilliant job while they were out there. Like fan, like Lucy Staniforth cam things like that. That it worked really well, and it yeah. got the audience, and it got personality across. It was just, it was, yeah, it was nice to watch. Exactly. Like, yeah. That's what people are interested in. They want to know, like as as much as like it's it's being newsy. You want to know the lives. Yeah. And you want to you want to know what type of people they are and how they interact. So. It's like it was exciting to watch those videos on like Lioness's Daily and stuff like that. Like yeah. that was just nice. And there's there's an appetite for it now, yeah. and people are more, especially after this World Cup. There's such an appetite for women's football. Everyone wants to do it. Everyone wants to know about yeah. it. Everyone wants to kind of jump on the bandwagon. Yeah. Um, my only fear is I don't want people to kind of companies, massive people, come in and be like oh now all of a sudden we're going to take over this industry yeah. when they don't know anything about it and people like us people that have doing it for longer than we have get sort of pushed to the back and yeah, yeah. content gets taken away <laughs> that's the only issue i have like these major companies should be working with people that are fans people yeah. that do media people that are influential online things like that they should be doing things with them rather than taking it over yeah. and i think that's that's the only concern i have but yeah. i think there's a way around it. Yeah, overall, it's it's going to be an Pretty exciting. Positive. It's going to be an exciting first couple of weeks, definitely. I think as, yeah. as a fo- as a women's football fan. Interesting to see how it pans out. Yeah, keep well. You know, stay with us on the channel, and we'll stay let you with know. Us. <laughs> um, questions. Then we had we we put out a tweet and we put it on Instagram as well, asking for some questions. Um, so we picked a few. So firstly. Um, Beatenberg X on Twitter asks, "Who are you looking forward to seeing the most this season?" Is that in like player or I'm gonna, team? I'm gonna say player. I've I've like Liverpool. I'm just gonna okay. If that's um, not your question, I'm sorry, but yeah. Mel Lawley. Yeah. But also, um, Gemma Perfield. I was gonna say Gemma. Per- yeah. You just took the two. I was gonna say. Well, that's a shame. Um, I'll, maybe even Charles as well. Yeah, I'll go. These are I'll the awkward silences um, that you didn't like. Yeah, I'll go Suman Kirk then. Okay. Because I want to see if she can better her goal yeah, tally. I think she season. will. I think she's got the delivery and I stuff think now. If Charles stays fit, and then obviously with Mel Lawley coming in. Got Clark as well. And Clark. Oh my God, Jess Clark. Yeah. yeah. Wow. 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 <laughs> that's gonna. That's gonna be a hard. Well. I love not... the squad depth we have in midfield now. Yeah. The well. The next question then is from a Klopp as a scouser. What's our strongest starting eleven going to be this season, taking into account the oh, new signings? I'm gonna signs. have to write this one down a little bit. So I'm gonna go mm. probably Preuss. Still, yeah. I haven't said Preuss's name in a long time. <laughs> Bradley Auckland, the captain at centre back. Mm-hmm. Probably Robe with her for now. Yeah. Or Fahi. Um. Then you've obviously got um. Jane. And Perfield. Yeah. As like the back four. Then I'd probably go Rogers, then Bailey. Oh, it feels weird saying oh, all these players' yeah. new names. Bailey, Murray, Chrissy Murray. Then Lawley's, surely it's got to be. Lawley, probably Charles. Mm. Are you Clark. putting Lawley on, on the left, on the right side? I sorry. don't know, probably. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the left and right. And then Sweetman Kirk. See, I'm going to put Lawley in that, like, Attack and midfield role. That's Christy Murray for me, though. I know, but they can like s- alternate. Maybe, yeah. And then I'm gonna put Clark on the right. I've gone Charles four, on the one, left. two, three. I've gone, yeah, yeah. I'm saying me too. Rogers we'll sitting. Well, insert a picture of each. Of Rogers them. sitting. So like Murray and Lawley, like okay, both in that role there. Eh? I but think then, that's more what. What the, about Bailey though? Yeah. Off the bench. I think just at first, like just for the first couple of games. But this is strongest starting eleven. Yeah, that's what I think our strongest starting eleven is. Mm, I could agree with that. Yeah. So like, I think maybe like even like Becky Jane might not play the first game. 
Like, do she you, will. Like, she, I mean, she will. She probably will. But, like, if you just want to, like, you know. She, I think yeah, I she's know. experienced enough to start the first game, yeah. in my opinion. Well, yeah, true. Do you think Kitchen's going to get more of a role this year? Um, I hope so. I don't think she's a great goalkeeper. She's a good goalkeeper. She only played a couple last season, and she, she played. when Royce got injured, and she played like a, a few more towards the end. Mm. Um, I, I hope so. I think as long as, as long as we stay in competitions, yeah. she definitely will. I think Price is number one for the league, but yeah. then you you don't know what type of preseason they're gonna have and what like, you know, roles Jepson wants them to have. So you, so you never know. But I hope she plays a little bit more. Um, and then final question then. It is from Bailey Allen, twelve on Instagram, and he says, "Where do you think Tony Duggan will go next?" I've got two written down here. Mm-hmm. I saw one online was a rumor, and then oh. the other's just been constantly like, yeah. well, not a rumor. It was like someone high. I can't think who it was. Had said they might go there. Yeah, Juventus or Man United. I don't want her to go to Man United. I think she will. I think she's best be... mates with Abby McManus, who's just signed for right. Man United. They need a central forward right. who's more expensive, more expensive, more experienced. But I think they've got too many strikers. Go on, then name them all. I can't. There you go. But they've just signed Jane Ross, uh, Ross as well. I don't even know if his name's Jane. It might be. I don't know. Yeah. They've just signed Ross. Like she's an experienced striker. Yeah, but Tony Duncan played number ten. No. Yeah. No, I just and don't want it to happen. Yeah, I'd, it will. Like she's definitely coming back. Can to I WSL. just say, Wolfsburg's a shout. Yeah, I said that to you, didn't because I? Because Mary Earps plays for Wolfsburg and they're besties. I think, oh, and that's true. Um, Wolfsburg Champions what about League. Leon. No, they've got too many forwards. No, Kira Walsh to Leon though. Oh, I like that. I like that as well. I like, I I really like that, that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I really like she's that. She's gonna fit. Lucy that Man Bronze City, there. Lucy Bronze, Kira Walsh. Paris. Oh my god! Oh. Think what kind of player she'll like develop into. Though, we need to watch more Hergeberg. of Leon as well this season. She's not on the telly. We'll, we'll find it somewhere. Someone <laughs> stream it on Facebook. <laughs> we'll just have to go. Facebook live. <laughs> we'll just have to go to Leon. <laughs> Someone pays me to go yeah. to Leon. I will so, happily anyone, go. Anyone want to take us to Leon? Yes, please. Just let us know in the comments below. But yeah, um, uh, yeah, Juventus. I didn't really. I haven't heard that one. That's a that's a new one. I heard that she one. said she wants a new challenge though and she's been in the WSL like she knows it yeah but they all say that don't they <laughs> people would think signing for Everton is a challenge <laughs> oh I meant the men not the women oh. you know I like the women's oh, team sorry to say that I'm, yeah. I'm only messing yeah well, I'm gonna get hate for that cool <laughs> Can we end well, this now? That's episode <laughs> Before 50. I say anything else. Episode 50 is over. Out with a bang. Fire okay. on the arm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to go now. Uh, we've, we've waffled on long enough. Tom said we need to be finished by 10 to it's 22, so we're early. So. <laughs> we're always early. Mm, we're always late. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Remember to like the video, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. Um, and we'll Road see you all. Road to 2000! Woo! Uh, yeah, and we'll see you all in our next video. <laughs> Don't know when it's going to be, <laughs> what we're going to be doing. But yeah, there'll be one soon. <laughs> Bye.